So when it comes to wiring, um, you some I, I often will, if I'm just doing something simple, use some header pins and some scrap wire and make my own wiring harnesses. But that only goes so far because the header pins um, don't have any uh, indicator of polarity or a way to make sure that the connector only fits in one way like other types of connectors which even though they may have the same dimensional sizes um, it's pretty a good advantage uh, to know that it can only go together the right way um, however when it, if you want to use your own connectors you're either going to have to harvest them off of old electronics and find something that works for your project or uh, you can actually buy the connectors without any of the without any wires in it but they also come without the contacts the little pins and there's two types male and female um, and they are sold according to the gauge of wire that you're going to be using. So for this demonstration I have already done uh, this side and I'm just going to put the same type of connector on. And I already have two of the three wires with pins on them and for the, oops, for the third pin I maybe I set that down. The the pins are usually attached to a strip, and you have to bend it a couple times, and it will break free from the carrier strip. And then usually, what I will do is get the pin set up in the tool and not not you know just just with enough pressure that it holds it so the first thing is if your tool is able to crimp several sizes of these pins pick the one that's most appropriate this is a 24 to 30 gauge pin so i'm going to use a setting that says 24 to 28 and i'm just going to press on it enough that it's held in place because these pins are super easy to drop. Then situate your wire so that you have it free kind of by itself. And then you want to put it into the back of the pin so that the insulation will go into the first set of little wings. There's usually two sets of wings that crimp down on the wire and the first set of wings are bigger because they go around the wire and the insulation. So these are the bigger ones in the back and the insulation goes through those and then the copper wire goes through the second longer pair. And you can see kind of on the red one how that works. The red insulation is crimped and held tightly so that relieves stress um, and then the copper is held by the second pair of wings and that's what makes the electrical contact so I'm gonna push it in pretty much as far as it will go whenever the, insula the insulation really can only fit through the first larger pair of wings and then it will get to a point where it won't go anymore. So that's all the way in. Just crush it all the way and hmm. So I apparently didn't have the wire in the in the wings at all. Sometimes you can twist the 
copper strands together. That helps a little bit. So that was pretty good. I would have liked to see the insulation go in just a tad further so that it comes out the other side. Uh, just so that it's um, more like the red where you can see the red kind of poking through the other side. If you don't grab enough of the insulation, it could fall off. Okay, so the next thing, of course, to worry about is the order of the pins. Oops, wrong connector. And usually the connector will designate a pin one. And then, I mean, it's up to you as the designer of the wiring harness to know which color is pin one and how and make sure that you're consistent. Uh, so I have pin one as white and then red goes in the middle. So I'll usually, I'll just line up all three and try to press them in all three at once because if you press in one then you won't have room to bend the other ones in. The other thing is the way that these pins hold in place is they have this little tab that sticks up and this little flap and it springs down as you push it in and then it clicks back up once it gets to that hole. And that's what locks it. You can see those three tabs are up, they're visible, and I can't pull them out because they are uh, coming up into the hole. So they're locked against the plastic housing. So I said uh, white was pin one. I'm gonna rotate the red one so it's facing up. And with all three of them facing up and in the order that I want, I'm going to slide them in, kind of get them set. Just double check. You'll know if you did it correct because none of the pins will be able to back out. If they do back out, then you didn't push them in far enough to get the little uh, tab to click into the plastic housing. My wire is now finished, so I can use it with the rest of the project. Well, that's how you make your own connectors. It's a way you can make your projects look a lot more professional. Not just look better, but uh, be easy to come back to in the future and interact with when all of your wiring harnesses are are well well made. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. See you next time.